QuickBooks Online Advance for a pet sitter or dog walker. Now, I know what you're thinking. Maybe I don't know what you're thinking. Maybe you have no idea what I'm thinking you're thinking. But here's what I'm thinking. Uh, if you're a small sort of business just starting out as a pet sitter or dog walker, it doesn't maybe make sense to use a product like QuickBooks Online Advance because that's meant for larger companies. So if that's the case, watch the video anyway, because a lot of this you can do, you, there's just certain things that I'll mention them, I'll call them out that you want to have access to in one of the other versions of QuickBooks Online. Um, and then just kind of pack this in the back of your mind for when you do get very large uh, as, a, as a pet sitting and dog walking business, where you have lots and lots of clients and you're doing, you know, maybe a million a year or more in revenues, and you have all kinds of people working for you, walking dogs and, you know, taking care of people's pets. So, um, if you are a big business, then this is definitely for you because you're going to want to see what QuickBooks Online Advanced has in store for you in terms of ways that you can track really useful information about your clients and their pets. So let's take a look at my screen and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Over here, QuickBooks Online Advanced. Um, we're going to start with, there's four major areas or five really areas that I want to direct your attention to. Uh, I want to spend most of my time on four of them. We're going to look at how to set up your customers. We're going to look at custom fields. This is the part that's only available in QuickBooks Online Advanced. We're going to look at how to set up your chart of accounts. And we're going to look at how to set up products and services uh, in QuickBooks Online Advanced. And then we'll take a quick look at some reports, uh, at least some of the obvious ones, right? Now, once you understand the components of how these lists sort of come together, then you'll be able to see why QuickBooks Online Advanced make this all a lot easier, right? So customers, we'll want to set up each customer with each pet as a sub-customer. This will allow us to track detailed information about each pet. The downside of that is if you want to invoice, you have to invoice for each pet separately, which is probably a good thing because as I happen to overhear my wife discussing today on the phone who happens to work in an animal hospital, for insurance reasons, um, this is useful because a lot of times the insurance companies w want a separate bill for the pet that you're submitting to get reimbursed for. So, so definitely a good idea and definitely how we want to set this up in QuickBooks Online Advanced. So we have a customer and then each pet is a sub-customer and that way we can track information separately and in great detail about each pet. So if you're invoicing for two of the pets at once, um, you can invoice one, then make a copy, change the customer out, and then um, you know just swap out the customer to the other pet name. And so it, it won't take long to do the billing, in other words. Um, it's, the, the, it's, it's not as difficult as you might think. Okay, so if we come down here and I go under sales and I go to customers, you'll see that's exactly how I've got it set up. So you have client and then the pet name. So we have Arthur Spooner and his pet's name is Spot. We have Matthew Fulton with his pet Silas. And we have myself with my two little goddesses, Aphrodite and Artemis, right? And you can see there's a balance. You can see that I've invoiced $90 for each of them for dog walking. And you can see how the total rolls up to me as the client uh, for $180. So that's essentially how we want the customers set up. And when we get to the custom field, you'll see the context uh, in terms of what I'm talking about. That's what I meant when I said, you know, once you understand the basic setup of each of these, um, you'll be able to see how uh, QuickBooks Online Advance makes this much easier. You know, in other words, when you see the components of how these lists come together, that's going to happen now because I'm going to walk you through the setup of the custom fields. Okay. So. Um, again, if you don't use QuickBooks Online Advance or you're not ready to do that yet, then you'll, uh, you won't have access to this part. And the best thing I can suggest is using the notes here and just putting detailed information in the notes um, area of the customer. And you can also use customer type, for example, for the breed. And the other thing I would definitely suggest doing is if you have an intake form of some kind, which hopefully you do, where you gather all the information you need about your client's pet or pets, um, then you can attach that PDF to the customer. So if, I, if I'm if i in Aphrodite here and I go to edit, you can add attachments right here at the customers at the, you know, in this case, the pet's sort of profile level. So that intake form, you might attach the PDF or if it's a, you know, whatever kind of document it is, you can attach that here. Um, so I definitely suggest doing that, especially if you're not going to be able to track all that and all the information using the custom fields, like I said. 
So uh, if you are using QuickBooks Online Advanced, then you're going to want to set up the custom fields as follows. Let's go to the gear icon here. Under list, you'll find custom fields. Now, I've already got this set up, but to create a new custom field, you'll simply click Add Field. You'll choose the type, either text, number, date, or drop-down list. Okay. And then you kind of set everything else up from there. You choose what forms it, you know, they'll be able to be accessed from, uh, of course, the category, if it's at the customer level, the transaction level, or the vendor level, and so on, right? So I'm going to say yes to this because I don't actually want to create a new field. So the first thing I thought was handy is that you can create a referral source type field. I'll edit this so you can see what this looks like, right? So how did, they, how did, they, how did the customer find you? Right, I love you. I, I love doing this. I love tracking this kind of stuff because then I can get cool reports that can kind of show me revenue for each different referral source. So if I've got YouTube videos and I get customers that way, right? Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, even uh, Twitter, you know, whatever it is, you can list the different you know social networks, or it could be an individual that you put here. Maybe there's individuals who refer you a lot of business. So anything you want, as you can see, you can have up to a hundred choices in any drop-down list. Right. And of course, the category I selected was that it's for the customer. It's accessible on the sales receipt, an invoice estimate, credit memo or a refund receipt. Right. So that's handy. Uh, the other thing I did was the date. So next appointment. This is really cool. So you can create date based fields. And so you can set up a field for the next appointment date. So, you know, the next time that you're scheduled to, you know, either do pet sitting for that pet or, you know, if, if, if it's a if it's a dog walking uh, engagement, you know, whatever it is, you can set the next appointment date and you can track that here. Okay. Here I created a field where you can create, just to give you an example, you know, another drop down list where the choice is either yes or no. Our dog park's okay. If we're walking people's pets, some people may not want you to take their pets to a dog park. So we want to be able to track that so we know in certain cases, certain pets should not be taken to a dog park. Right. And then, of course, we created the drop down for the breed. Now, again, you're only you're limited to only 100. There's a lot more than 100 breeds out there. I just listed a, a handful or a little more just to give you an idea. Another thing to be aware of is that you cannot uh, reorder these as of now. That will hopefully change. I believe it will change soon enough. But right now you can't reorder these. So normally you'd want to be able to maybe put them in alphabetical order. So you, what I'm getting at is you want to get as complete a list together as possible in terms of what breeds you think you're going to need. You may want to keep it general. I know there's a lot of like, you know, like there's different kinds of terriers, but maybe we just want to use terrier for all terrier breeds, you know, for this purpose. Anyway, you can always put more information in the notes, right? So, so again, just plan ahead for now and assume you can't reorder these or sort them or anything like that. You will, when selecting them, be able to choose from a drop down, So you don't have to go searching, you know, scrolling the list. You can start typing the first few letters and the choice will come up. So, you know, again, you can add as, as many as you need up to a hundred. Okay. So we have the breed set up there and the breed is at the customer level, which is why it's not accessible on any sales forms. Cause again, it's, it's part of the customer data, not part of the transaction, right? So that's the, uh, and those are just some examples to get you started. There may be many more things you can think of. Just bear in mind the different types of information you can track, text, number, date, or drop down. okay? So that's your custom fields. Now the next thing I want to walk you through is just some of the key things you need to know about the chart of accounts, right? There's some accounts you're going to want to make sure you have set up right away. Let's just go in and set up the accounts we need. Now, again, if you're offering dog walking, pet sitting, and training services, which I was poking around online, I noticed that a lot of, there's a lot of, it seems, bigger companies out there, actually, that do offer, you know, this combination of services and, and then, of course, more stuff. Um, so if you're one of those kind of businesses, then you'll definitely want a separate income account for each of these services. You want to be able to track your income for dog walking separately from pet sitting and separately from training services right? If we go over to accounting here and we go to the chart of accounts, I just want to focus your attention on the income section because that's, you know, where I'm mainly focusing for this purpose. So you can see what I've begun to set up. Here's dog walking. All right. We'll have product sales. Um, sales of product income is kind of a default account. Um, you know, so it's all there. Training services, Never mind what unapplied cash payment income is for now. Okay, but I've got those three basics. We have the dog walking. Uh, I thought I had pets sitting here as well. Perhaps I forgot to create that. So let's create it now. We just click new. 
Okay, the type of account is going to be income. Okay, service or fee income. Pet sitting services. Okay, and save and close. And that's it. Now we have what we need for the next part, which is where we're going to set up our products and services, which, by the way, is why I'm going in the order that I'm going in. You want to get your accounts set up, especially your income accounts, before you set up your products and services, because you're going to need to link each product and service to an income account, right? So important to do it in that order. So let's jump down to products and services. Uh, where are we? Under sales, products and services here. So same general area where customers are. And notice once I'm in here in the sales area in general, I have access to it all, right? Customers, products and services, and so on. So here, I created a 30-minute walk and a 60-minute walk. Again, I poked around online. I saw that this is how you guys seem to do this. Um, I also gave you an example in case you want to sell products. It seems to me it might make sense that um, if you're walking people's dogs, maybe they'd buy leashes from you or collars or whatever else you can sell them bowls you know it seems like an easy add-on to your sales to be able to offer products assuming you can get them you know sort of wholesale and cheap enough that it makes sense and you can make a profit on it okay and then i do have training here right um i didn't have pet sitting so let's create a new product okay we'll call it a service okay we'll call it pet sitting okay i also set up categories that's why it was grouped so nicely there so I have dog walking services, auto restorations for a pre previous video that I had done. So ignore that. Uh, dog walking services, perennials and grasses, also previous video. We have products and we have training. So I can create a whole new category called pet sitting. Because within pet sitting, just like I have dog walking services and I have different durations, right? 30 or 60 minutes. I might want to do something similar with pet sitting. Okay, and here's where we need to assign that income account. Pet sitting services, okay. And so this could be pet sitting, you know, it could be, it's probably gonna have like a day rate, right? You're gonna, somebody goes away, you have so many days times whatever the day rate is. So, so pet sitting daily, something like that. It's just a description so you know what it is. And then for a SKU, you can use PSD. I usually just abbreviate the first letter in each word. Okay, save and close. And now you can see what this looks like. Notice also you can add photos, you know, just to make it a little more descriptive. Um, you can actually see there's my, my uh, Artemis and my Aphrodite. And now you can see how it's sectioned off nicely because of the category. So maybe I have a daily rate, maybe I have a separate weekly rate, and so on and so forth, right? So this way you can set these up. And I'll go back in here, and you can say if the daily rate is, I don't know, let's say it's $100 a day. I have no idea what people charge for this. So I'm just making it up. Um, is it taxable? Probably not. Right, because it's a service. The only thing that would be taxable here in most states would be the products, right? Some states charge sales tax on labor as well, on services. So obviously you have to understand the rules for the state that you're in. Okay, but now we've got the products set up. Okay, and now I want to show you just real quick um, one of the cool reports you can create, because like I said, we can, uh, you know, we've set it up and I did this with our customers uh, where we have custom fields for dates. So let's go into the reports area and I'll go to custom reports. Okay. And here's, I sectioned it off. I'll show you how to build this in a second, but I created this report that says upcoming appointments. Okay. And so it has all the information, the customer and the pet. Next appointment date, okay, dog park's okay, right, I've got that included here. And here's the notes, and by the way, I can click into this, this is all the notes for Arthur Spooner. Notice I got information about the special diet, medications, and so on. You know, the notes come in really handy that way. And if I click on this, it actually takes me right to that customer, and here, the notes show up here, okay, and if I edit the customer, we'll also find the notes here. So if you, and, and you have access to this if you don't use QuickBooks Online Advanced. So like I said earlier, if, you, if you're if you not ready for a product like QuickBooks Online Advanced, you can use QuickBooks Online Plus and you still have access to this feature, right, to the notes. So you would just put all the detailed information here in the notes. Um, I'll save that. 
Now, how did I build that report? I'll show you. So if I customize this report, you'll see. Okay, it's uh, basically a custom filter, right? With the date range from October 5th to November 7th. So, and you can change this, right? You can do it this month, what have you. Okay. And that's basically it. It's a, it's just one simple report. Ba it started with a customer contact list, by the way. Okay, so you can see from the title here, this is a customer contact list report. But then what I did was I chiseled it down. So ch under change columns, I got rid of all the stuff in here that I didn't care about. And I included here just customer, phone numbers, email, breed, next appointment date, dog parks, okay, and the notes, right? So you start with a customer contact list report. If I go back to the main reports area over to standard, you can even use this and search for customer contact list. Okay, so this is what that report kind of originally looked like. And then you customize the report. And once you have the report looking the way you want it, you choose save customization and you choose which group uh, you want it in. And you don't have to have a group, that's uh, optional. But I like to keep things organized, right? And once you do that, you'll find it here in custom reports. So there's different sections of reports here uh, that I've created. Keep in mind that I mentioned a couple times already, I have some stuff in here that's from prior videos that I did that aren't related to this, such as this activity report, right? But I created a report section for dog walking and that's where the upcoming appointments report is. Um, let's see if this actually works. I'm, I don't know if this was set up the same way. It is not, it's grouped by referral source and I didn't specify a referral source for these. So let's go back in to these guys. Okay, so let's say that I came in as a referral from YouTube. That goes on the invoice. Okay, that was Aphrodite. You see now it sections it off because I updated it. So this custom field has to live in the transaction, right? You can also put it in the customer profile, so you sort of have it there for reference, but it definitely needs to be in the transactions for this to work. But now you can see at a quick glance how you can organize and show for a particular date range how much revenue came in based on customers who were referred via YouTube. That can be really important and useful information for any kind of business, right? Um, so there's that. Let's go back over to sales and to customers and We'll go back into Aphrodite here and we'll edit her. Okay, and over here's custom fields. So here's where I can permanently mark the referral source as YouTube for Aphrodite. Over here to Artemis, do the same thing, custom fields and YouTube, right? Okay, and now if I go to create a new invoice, this is important to understand it will now remember that the referral source is YouTube. It will default to that, okay? So that's the custom fields. That's the reporting. That's products and services. That's the accounts. That's everything you really need to know to get started using QuickBooks Online Advanced for a pet sitting or dog walking business. As always, if you have any questions, you know where to find me on the web. You can post your comments on the video below or if you're watching this um, on Firm of the Future, if you're watching this at new.nerdenterprises.com. Wherever you're watching this, there's probably going to be a space. You know what to do. Post your comments and questions below. I think we have visitors. Come here, you. You get to meet the infamous, the famous. Come here. Oi, Aphrodite and Artemis. Aphrodite and Artemis. There they are. I wasn't making them up. They're real. <laughs> Thanks, girls.